Air Force Special Warfare is one of a kind. Because Air Force operators are commonly embedded in other special operations units, not only are they trained in their own specialty, but they also learn how to execute the missions of the Spec Ops communities they work in. However, although Air Force Special Warfare is unique, they share something with a lot of other soft units, which is that they have both enlisted and officer personnel. And those officers are what's going to be discussed in this video. There are three officer jobs who serve as leaders of these prestigious an elite special reconnaissance, combat controller, pararescue man, and TACP airman, which would be the special tactics officer, combat rescue officer, and tactical air control party officer. With that said, what exactly do these officers do? What do they bring to the table in the world of Air Force Special Warfare? And what does it take to become one of these officers? We're going to answer all those questions for you, and much more. What's up guys, I'm Veteran Vinny, the voice behind General Discharge. Join us as we take a dive into some of the United States Air Force's elite. This is Air Force Special Warfare Officers. Let's kick things off with Special Tactics Officers. Special Tactics Officers, also called STOs, are elite special operators uniquely skilled in commanding and controlling operations, integrating air and ground capabilities, often necessary in special operations, to achieve battlefield objectives. It's important to note here that STOs are not special recon, pararescue men, or combat controllers. However, they lead special tactics teams in preparation for worldwide contingency operations both in hostile and austere environments, ranging from counterterrorism missions to global humanitarian assistance operations. With their leadership of the special tactics teams, they work alongside joint and coalition special operations partners and leverage their teams to provide global access for force projection, close air support, combined arms, strategic attack, personnel recovery, combat search and rescue, and battlefield trauma surgery. Just like special tactics officers lead their airmen into battle, you too can lead your own troops into battle in the brand new Age of Empires mobile today's sponsor. If you're a fan of Age of Empires like we are, and trust us, the General Discharge team has spent many sleepless nights playing it on Xbox, then you're gonna love hearing this. Age of Empires Mobile launched October 17th on both Apple Store and Google Play. This means that for the first time ever, you can now play the legendary game of Age of Empires on your phone for free. For those that don't know, Age of Empires Mobile is an immersive medieval war strategy game where you experience anything from intense large-scale warfare to brutal city sieges. Step into battle with thousands of troops that you can choose from a variety of historical civilizations like the Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, and Frankish Empire. But don't get it twisted, brute force won't win you the battle. You're gonna need to use your brain. Your strategic thinking and tactical skills will be what lead you to victory. When you're on the defense, you'll be able to design defenses by editing troops, watchtowers, walls, and more. And when you're on the offense, you'll be able to use your army and alliance siege weapons to attack and plunder in stages defeating enemy troops, assault the city and looting it. And for being a mobile game, Age of Empires Mobile features impressive, high-quality graphics. This really helps the game feel immersive with how well they portray the historical civilizations, troops, and different architectures. But if you don't believe us, try it out for yourself. It's free, so what do you have to lose? Make sure to click the link in the description below and use code AOEMGL so you don't miss out on claiming some awesome in-game item rewards. You'll get an exclusive value pack, as well as special top-up offers on their official website. Site. It's on a first come, first serve basis, so act fast. Thank you to Age of Empires Mobile for sponsoring today's video. Special Tactics Officers are trained in military static line and free fall techniques, combatant diving, demolition, and joint terminal attack control. What's interesting to note here is that even though a STO is not a combat controller, they do attend most of the same training as their enlisted CCT counterparts in their pipeline. In order for someone to become a STO, they must pass a tough standard set under the Air Force Special Warfare Initial Fitness Test, or IFT, which consists of max pull-ups, max sit-ups in 2 minutes, max push-ups in 2 minutes, a 3 mile run, 1500 meter swim, and two 25 meter underwater crossovers. Along with that, candidates must pass a two phased screening panel in order to be given a shot at training. In phase one, a panel of career field experts review applications submitted by the deadline. Those who are selected by the panel are invited to attend phase two, which is a one week evaluation where candidates are given extensive psychological tests and interviews, have briefing and writing skills evaluations, problem solving and leadership ability evaluations evaluations, and intense PT both on land and in the water. With Special Tactics Officers covered, let's move on to Combat Rescue Officers. 
When a civilian needs rescue, they call 911. When a Navy SEAL, Green Beret, or Army Ranger needs rescue, they call the PJs. Combat rescue officers lead those PJs, and will be the ones responsible for planning and executing that rescue mission. Combat rescue officers, also known as CROWs, are personnel recovery and command and control specialists. Responsible for organizing and strategizing recovery operations, combat rescue officers provide the insights and skills essential for rescue missions to succeed. These highly capable and courageous airmen not only train, equip, and develop necessary survival skills and rescue personnel, but will often deploy into direct combat as a member of the rescue team themselves. They are the subject matter experts of combat search and rescue. Crows conduct strategic, operational, and tactical level planning, provide battle staff expertise, manage theater personnel recovery operations, and conduct combat operations. Since personnel recovery can be needed from both hostile engagements and humanitarian aid missions, Combat rescue officers must know how to plan and lead in a multitude of different scenarios and threat levels. Most crows fall under Air Combat Command. However, a small number are parts of special tactics teams assigned to Air Force Special Operations Command, leading personnel recovery operations for the United States Special Operations Command. What's important to note is that although a crow receives most of the same training that a PJ does, crows do not receive medical training. The PJ pipeline includes a paramedic course, but because crows have a different role and serve as leaders of PJs, there's no need for them to receive that medical training. To put it simply, they just serve a different purpose on the team. In order for someone to become a crow, they too must pass a tough standard set under the Air Force Special Warfare IFT, which consists of max pull-ups, max sit-ups in 2 minutes, max push-ups in 2 minutes, a 3-mile run, 1500 meter swim, and two 25 meter underwater crossovers. And just like their still counterparts, they will need to be evaluated under a two-phase system to get a shot at at selection. With combat rescue officers covered, let's move on to TACP officers. In its simplest terms, a tactical air control party airman puts warheads on foreheads. If they were writing what they do on a resume, they'd say they work in austere environments, providing precision terminal attack guidance for U.S. and coalition fixed and rotary wing close air support aircraft, artillery, and naval gunfire, while also establishing and maintaining command and control communications and advising ground commanders on the best use of air power. TACP officers do all of that, but in more of a leadership context, because they are officers, of course. TACP officers are also the primary Air Force advisors to U.S. Army, joint, multinational, and special operations ground force commanders for the integration of air, space, and cyber power. TACP officers plan, request, coordinate, and control close air support as joint terminal attack controllers and lead the TACP weapon system. By ensuring these highly skilled operators are physically, mentally, and technically prepared, ground forces can rest assured that precision firepower will be delivered when they need it most. The important thing to know here is that even though TACP is wrapped under Air Force Special Warfare for recruiting purposes, it is a predominantly conventional force. A significant majority of the TACP community works with conventional Army and Marine units, which is where they get their nickname, Air Force Infantry, from. However, roughly 10% of them do get to work in special tactics as special warfare TACPs, but that is no guarantee for anyone who becomes a TACPO. For those who are interested in becoming a TACPO, they will also have to pass a tough standard set under the Air Force Special Warfare IFT. For TACPOs, it consists of max pull-ups, max sit-ups in two minutes, max push-ups in two minutes, a mile and a half run, 1500 meter swim, and two 25 meter underwater crossovers. If you noticed, TACPOs only have to do a mile and a half run, whereas STOs and CROWs have to do a three mile run. Don't let that be the deciding factor though. And just like their STO and CROW counterparts, they will need to be evaluated under a two-phase system to get a shot at selection. It's important to understand that although Air Force Special Warfare officers are indeed operators, there is a stark contrast between the day-to-day -day life and career progression between them and their enlisted counterparts. As officers rank up, their job slowly evolves into more paperwork and administrative duties. A good way to look at things is that special warfare enlisted operators get more operating time, but get paid less compared to officers. The officers are placed in leadership opportunities early, and as they progress, they will have more influence in strategic decisions. You can always have the best of both worlds and start off as enlisted, and then cross over to the dark side and commission as an officer. If if you're interested in joining any of these career fields and need to start training for the IFT, we have an in-depth video featuring the legendary Stu Smith discussing the 
the inner workings of the test. Scan the QR code on screen or go to the link in the description below to go watch it. This video was meant to be an introduction to the Air Force Special Warfare Officer jobs. If you're looking to take a deeper dive into things, you definitely need to go check out One's Ready, a podcast of a few aspect war dudes who discuss everything you need to know about Air Force Special Warfare. The link to their channel will be in the description below. Well, that is the down and dirty of the Air Force Special Warfare Officers. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.